this is a beauty this when i told this one on location and like the other one i told you with the pigeon i told that on location but you couldn't hear about it you couldn't hear it. you said the traffic was that bad so i've done a few of the old ones because i've looked in the archives and realized people haven't really seen them because of the, the noise is that bad so i've had to stop doing them on location so this was a good one a friend of mine called liam henry won't mind me mention his name from hemlington irish lad a lot of his family were in the uh, maze prison uh, they all got out, all fucking top dangerous people from over there. Don't mind me saying this because it's over now. And they got out there, his family are dangerous. So me and him, we used to do quite a few big taxes together. And we never threatened people. We, like we say, we all scammed them. So he knew a lad in the town um, from Afghanistan. He was from this lad. And he used to sell us the heroin. Now, I fucking hate heroin. I've never sold it in my life. I can't stand the stuff. So he's selling it, and I think he's paying 22 grand a key. So somebody's taxed him and rubbed his stuff. So I've got an article to try and get these lads in here. The lads have shit themselves and fucked off out the area. They just went. They took something like 40 grand off and 50 grand. I couldn't get it. I was going to get half the money. I probably took it all. So I went out to a lot and put them when I got there. He said, oh, he's not here. My brother's in Glenet I promise you. I know this lad from the Link for years. You know, four hours later, he me. He said, oh, he has done it. He's fucked off abroad. And they've, got, they've, they've done one, but they've got fucking 40, 50 grand. So I'd seen him years later, but he was fucked. He was on the drugs. So anyway... He's wanting a kilo. William said, I don't big brand get you. He said it's uh, the best stuff going. Never sold it in my life, so he said, I can get it off big brand. He said, What were price? He said, about he said, I'm paying 20. So I said, Well, you can match that, 22. He'll give you it. But you'll have to pay up front. He said, Oh, I haven't got the money. He said, I've only got he said, I told you, I'll see what I can do. So he's gone away. I mean the name's come back to see me. So I'm I'm in the house at Liam's in Colt in Hemlington. I'm sitting there and uh, we're having talking that he says uh, I think he's gonna go for it. And so the next bit he phones up, he said, uh, I've got seventeen seventeen thousand now and can I give you the other in two or three days because I've got like a nine nine of it sold straight away. I said, I've done about that. Eli I said, I've done about that. I said, uh, I need the money because he said, Look, you can trust me, this is my dress and all that, but so we went and seen him, made it more made it more um, that's Eli Barker and people uh, made it more authentic by going to see him instead of doing the deal straight away so I've got to see him and he lived in Middlesbrough so I goes to Middlesbrough it's a rough area um, in Middlesbrough I, think, I can't remember the name of it now it was a rough place anyway so I goes there and it was a lot of um, large Afghan people he knew who he sold it to and worked with so they were there so it was just in the portal cafe just around that way so we go to the and see him and we're talking to him and he's going and gets in the car with us so I was in the, I was in, I was in the Cosworth I was in so Liam's talking and said look you can't fuck Brian about you know, you need to pay him no no I won't I'll be here and this that and the other so I said okay then if I give you this for 17 and you'll give me the rest in a few days you know what I mean he said yeah well that's 17 he said I'll give you the five he said can I give you it he said probably two days at the most I might even have it today I said that's okay then mate so I said, well, we'll leave it. I said, leave it till later on tonight. It's a bit dark, I admit, because it, you're always better doing, if you're doing drug runs, you're always better doing them in, like, say, five o'clock when it's the tea time traffic. It's less unlikely you'll get pulled over. If you're driving down the road, top of the big car, and the seeds will pull you anyway. So we always get somebody to go. So we used to use a lad who was a taxi driver. Nice kid, he lived next door to Liam. So we used to give him five hundred quid to do little drops and stuff like that. So we'd never get caught. And what he used to do, we used to put it in the same thing. I always put it in there. What what we used to do was put the gear in plastic, so you'd fingerprint, put gloves on, tape it up again, put a bit of diesel in it again, so it smells of diesel. So it's just come from Afghanistan, we said it was, where he's from. And he's, oh, brilliant, brilliant. So, it's, and so it stinks a bit of diesel. So what we used to always do is give it to the taxi driver. And we used to put it, you know, like a snooker bag where you put the snooker balls. We put it in there, so there's no fingerprints. There's no DNA or nothing. Then you see we had no fingerprints on it. So we put it in the back, the taxi driver. So if the put cops pull him over, he said, oh, I've just had a fair at such and such. Do you know what I mean? So I told him, I'll get somebody to phone up, book a fair in. Like, say, Smith, Tommy Smith can pick me up at such and such. So that's registered then at the taxi office. So then he's got to pick this Tommy Smith up. It could be someone we know. Just drop them in the town centre. And that, that's the excuse. So oh, he said, I've just picked the line up from such and such. Tommy Smith. The cops are checking, I'll just check this out. And I'll go to the taxi place, check it out. Come back. Yeah, he did. Dropped him. So the weather that was, and they said, there's no cameras there, the thing, the area where you pick them up, there'd be no cameras, and the area where they drop them, there'd be no cameras. You're talking 20 odd years ago, maybe more. So it was all, everything I did was military side precision. Everything, the little, the people that were present, everything was all checked out. So anyway, we got this taxi driver. Anyway, it's Leo for a He said, is everything all right? I said, yeah, I said, that, um, 
bit of shopping there tonight. I said about the next 20 minutes. If I will come, I said, taxi driver's going to drop it off uh, to you. And he said, yeah, no problem. So the next minute, he's, um, we've got we've got the air bag. So what we've done, we've done the same thing, polythene, and we just got a kilo of, of sugar. <laughs> Seriously, a kilo of sugar, because that's what it weighs. That's a kilo. So I've got a kilo of sugar, and um, I've got the plastic, and I've just put it in. So it just feels like when you, when you feel it, you can see, you can feel it. So I put it in this thick polythene again. I've done the same trick. I've got the sellotape and I've taped it with about five rolls of sellotape. So it's all sticky tape on it and everything. It's put in a bag. So he's getting it and he's getting it for like 17 grand. So he's, this taxi driver has to then take it to the lad in Middlesbrough, near the portal cafe from Hemlington. But it's, it's not fucking real. It's just sugar. A fucking kilo of silver spoon sugar. So they've, he's gone down there. He's not going to start testing the fucking thing in the street because it's all taped up the same thing. Same type of scam. We took we took the like, time to do it. And uh, so anyway, he said, I said, he's on his way. I said, sorry, I brought the delay. I said, I've had to drop another one off with somebody else first. So he said, oh, that's all right. No problem, Brian. I said, well, can you give me another favour? I said, he's got to do one more with another kid. I said, so it'll be maybe 15, 20 minutes. I said, is that okay? Just makes it realise oh, he's dropping some off. So psychologically, he's thinking, oh, he's already dropped two off. So he's all, whoa, 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 all buzzing. So he said, hey, I'll definitely have that money for you straight away. I'll definitely I'll have it tonight. He said, so I said, that's okay, brother. No problem. Sneaky, horrible cunt you was. Horrible fucking selling heroin to people. Getting people on that stuff. When you're selling heroin, you're contributing to all that crime on the streets. You're contributing to kids not getting fed. You're contributing to old people getting mugged and mums and dads getting robbed. Kids who are getting families sticking needles in them, taking the kids' money for food. So you're destroying people when you sell that fucking shite. I hate this stuff. So I thought, this way here... I'm taking 22 grand worth of heroin off the street because he's not going to have the money to sell it. If he sold that, he'd have made 22 grand plus and he'd put more. So I thought, I'm doing a favour to the public here by taking that shit off the street because the IRA lads and all them, UDF lads and that, can't stand the stuff in Ireland. They fucking hate it and that's what they do. That's people get shot selling it in their area. So we were doing the same thing as them lads. We're nowhere near as powerful as them, but we were doing the same type of thing, stopping the fucking shit getting sold. So anyway, this taxi driver's gone there He's got to meet the lad, so he's coming to the car, he goes, where's the stuff? So he, he always used to put it in the back seat, underneath the back seat. So the passenger, he said, I'll, if he got caught to the police, he said, oh, not my stuff, I'll just give someone a lift, as I told you what I used to do. So when the lad's coming, he's like that, he give him the fucking 17 grand cash. The other kid got it. He went, oh, cheers, brother, and all that. And he went, anyway, he fucked off. So about 30, we come back about 20 minutes later, the lad come in, got the money. So we give him a thousand pound. So we got 17 grand with you. So we got eight each for 16, we give him one. So we've got 17,000 pounds for a fucking kilo of sugar. So about 30, 40 minutes later, he phones, he goes, Brian, what the fuck's this? I went, it's silver spoon, selling hell to people on the street, you scumbag. I said, I have two lumps on me. It's sweet, in it? T taste that, it's nice and sweet. I said, you fucking scumbag. I said, you want trouble, I'll give you fucking trouble. I'll chase, I'll chase you out of Middlesbrough completely. Never ever got no comebacks off him. Never heard of him selling drugs again in that area. I think he just fucked off out the way. Never seen him again. So got a heroin dealer off the street, got a fucking coke, uh, sorry, heroin worth 22 grand, but it'll probably make 40 grand in little bags. So yeah, doing the public a, a favour really, people go, oh, I used to beat everyone up and do it. No, I didn't beat people like I used to do the scams like this. The people went to fight, I'd have a fight with them. So just another story in a day. Um, um, so keep listening. Don't forget to push the, the like buttons. There's loads more stories on there. There's loads in the archives and all the look at. Tons and tons of stuff. So I hope you have a great day tomorrow. It's Sunday tomorrow. Uh, God bless you all. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you very much.